Welcome to this Stampscapes Lab uh, recovery episode. All right, so I stamped on top of this holographic blue uh, piece of cardstock with stays on ink on here. And sometimes with stays on ink on some of these types of surfaces, if you keep the stays on ink down too long, I think the ink kind of dries um, in between the rubber and the surface. And then when you lift the stamp off of there, um, the ink adheres more to the rubber than transfers onto the surface down here. So I, I gave it a couple more impressions and uh, I, I don't know, on this particular surface, it just didn't really adhere really well. I mean, it did pretty good when I gave it a quicker impression, but we still have this residual um, kind of ghost image of that first attempted impression, all right? Okay, now, that being said, if I tried to remove these um, solvent ink, which is what stays on is, impressions like immediately after stamping, I might have been able to remove it with a little bit of alcohol on a cotton ball, but I tried it the other day and I had let the ink um, sit on the surface for a little while, so it didn't seem to do anything. <laughs> that stays on ink is really quite permanent, just like it states. So uh, I was surprised at the transfer on there, which is good in some ways, because you want that, uh, when you do use stays on ink, you want it to really adhere and to, uh, you know, be permanent, just like it's supposed to. Okay, so that being said, um, on this t particular paper right here, I did want to kind of make something out of it. So this is going to be a, oh, kind of a recovery piece. And what I'm going to do, one of the things that you can do in scenic stamping is you can kind of bury things, okay? If you don't like it, um, you can bury it behind media or you can um, layer other types of imagery over the top of it. And that's what I'm going to attempt here. And I'll do it with Brilliance inks, okay? Now the Brilliance ink will dry on this surface, but it won't adhere, okay? So um, I can do certain types of um, layering on here, and I'm trying to think of what I want to do. I, I, can, I thought about doing like a Northern Lights type of thing, and I was wondering if I should kind of hang my curtain-y style of a... Um, at whatever shapes, sky uh, shapes w uh, from above, or if I should just bury the imagery down below with kind of bolder imagery, like some pine trees or something like that. I'm not quite sure which one would be the best to go with here. Inevitably, I'll kind of do a little bit of both, even if I do the hanging curtains. If I do the hanging curtains, I'm gonna have to bury quite a bit of that up there. So maybe I'll do it from this side. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by hanging curtains. So certain types of um, northern lights look like, they call it curtains in terms of the effect. So you get kind of this um, type of, uh, I guess, negative space. And then the curtains are these like light beams um, that are already inherent in this uh, type of um, holographic cardstock. But um, we can also kind of, I don't know, further kind of mold or shape these uh, curtainy types of um, formations, I guess. Okay, so I think I've decided, I, I think I'm going to just bury the bottom imagery with some darker images. Uh, a couple that just come to mind immediately are spruce tree, and then I'll add in some... Um, imagery like the leafless pines, I think, okay? So, I wouldn't be doing this on most other types of papers like that, um, but this holographic right here, it's one of those um, papers, you know, that we're coming across these days that it has seeming, I don't know, it seems like it's been discontinued. You can still get it in the gold, which is really cool, and it comes in a multicolored pack. Um, but the blue version doesn't seem to be available out there, unless there's just a different version. But I don't know, it's like usually you can see, you can find, uh, you know, a few different sellers 
of a similar product, but we haven't seen this uh, this blue one, um, you know, in other listings. I'm just talking about like on eBay. I mean, uh, not eBay, but Amazon. So I don't know, it might be out there. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating a little bit of a vignette around here, but I'm also doing these kind of like hanging curtain types of things like that. Let me see if I could show you like right there, okay? Now that's not really smooth, but what I do is I come into it with um, a paintbrush afterwards. It's a little harder to see on this one because I don't think I've done this one before on this particular darker holographic. So we'll see um, how it goes. Okay, I need to obscure quite a bit down here, okay, because, uh, you know, that's where my, that's where I stamp my Joshua trees. Okay, so let me see if I can get my bearings on what I've applied. I can't really even see it because it's almost like it's black on super dark blue right in there so I have it like that so we have that heavy imagery of the Joshua trees okay now this is what I do on here okay now this is a water-based pigment ink it's very surface oriented so I've applied it onto the surface like this but it's not going to adhere when it's you know wet or dry so you can come into it and you can really kind of manipulate it around, uh, manipulate it. You can move it around on here. You can kind of fine tune. It's kind of a weird thing because it almost feels like um, if you applied like a oil pastel on a piece of plastic or something like that. You're kind of moving your ink around a bit like that. I mean, this is a water-based ink. It's not oil-based, but it feels like an oily type of um, substance that's been laid onto the paper, you know, in terms of the uh, the feel of it. That's what it feels like. So what you're doing, what, what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing a little streak like that, but I have ink on this now, which is almost like black paint. And what I do is I just kind of blot it off like that. And I come back into those so you can see these kind of streakier types of um, subtractive marks that I'm putting in there like that. So I've applied, but now I'm removing in kind of a selective, you know, stroke. So you can see that little stroke right there, that real thin one, like right there. And I'll do the same thing in a couple of these other areas. So it's like applying something like this but on this, okay, but then I'm able to kind of feather, you know, some of that black that's been applied in this case off the page, but then you kind of have to wipe, you know, what you've um, picked up with the brush like that so you can get those negative space or negative marks, reverse marks, I should say, into the wet ink. And that just gives these kind of these beams of light, these rays of light, uh, a more graceful um, appearance. OK, so this is what this looks like. Now, normally, if I'm doing this on a much lighter surface, I could see all these little black smudgy marks in here. But on this darker one, you really can't see it too much. You know, so I don't know if I need to go in and clean up maybe a little bit. I'll do that in some of these real light areas. Go oh, about like so. Okay, so let's leave this brilliance ink out. And what I'll do is uh, let me grab my uh, tree that I'm going to use in here. All right, I have my very white <laughs> spruce tree. Here, I'll pause this and clean that off. All right, I have my clean spruce tree. By the way, um, white over the top of this would probably look pretty interesting but the fact that I've already stamped out those Joshua trees down there in black I just know that um, the white um, pigment inks like the brilliance or something like that 
they're a little bit more see-through, so I know that that black impression would just show right through it. Now, we, that being said, maybe white, a white embossed, you know, you stamp out in white and then you use like a white detailed embossing powder over the top of this. Maybe that would work, I don't know. White ink, white embossing powder, as opposed to white ink, clear embossing powder. I don't know, I just think the double whammy, you know, would probably, that would probably work. It might look pretty interesting too, it might look more, even more dimensional, I don't know. Okay, so we're going to go with a pretty thick application of this ink on here. Um, I'm going to go pretty high on this because I'll do another impression right next to it. All right, so this is a fast, faster drying water-based pigment ink, okay? Um, it doesn't dry like super fast and it doesn't adhere. All right, so what I want to do on my impressions here, I want to go for a really thick, dark impression if possible. So I'm stamping this out, and then you're stamping, and then um, keeping that contact going. And that gives this ink a little bit of time to start setting up and to hopefully transfer onto the page. It, it's different than the stays on ink. If the stays on ink, if I was holding down this, long it's probably already dry underneath there and uh, when you lift it up that's that, that was the problem with that reverse um, kind of mark which I don't know maybe could be used for some sort of um, strategic I don't know reverse impression you know going you know in some future type of technique you know that we can develop but <laughs> I don't know I wouldn't know how long to hold it down I'd have to really do some tests and to see um, what type of imagery we can come up with um, in that type of uh, uh, whatever technique, potential technique. Okay, but this one I'm holding down and like I said, that ink starts to set up a little bit. It doesn't dry like I can even wipe my finger into this ink that I've used that cotton ball to, you know, streak on there and that would still come off at this time. All right, but that is a nice dark impression right there. See that right there? It's kind of muddled because it's right over the top of the other imagery that's already on there. So we want to really obscure a lot of that. So the other thing I was thinking about doing is I was thinking about coming down this way with my streaks, but I would have had to go down way, you know, pretty far into the scene. I guess you can say I have to come up pretty far from the bottom of the scene now with these images, but I thought with the imagery that would be better than just to have all it black, you know, filling in all that area um, over the top of those, you know, existing images that were down there. This is, It's not ideal, you know, I, I ideally have more space in between these trees so that we can see the streaks and, you know, the cool kind of features of this paper, but, you know, we're just doing some recovery here and just trying to make um, do with what we are working with here. Okay. Now this is really dark. It's dark on dark here. But I think we can come up with something pretty cool though. This paper is just really, it's such a cool um, holographic cardstock that uh, uh, it's really fun to work with. And we can create some pretty interesting um, looks. Here it is on the gold right here. They're like light pillars or something like that. Northern Lights. I, I just wish, I don't know. I, I hope, you know, it hasn't been discontinued. It's one of those things where maybe they they made this paper, it's silver paper, 
just inherently. But then what they do is they dye it with this blue over the top of it. And I know that because when I was, you know, removing, trying to remove those stays on impressions down there, it, um, you know, I, I had some blue on the, the cotton ball. Okay, let's go a little bit higher with um, this leafless limb. It's a little bit more spindly, of course, because it's skeletal instead of full, but um, it'll give us a little bit of a contrasting form in here, something um, spiny and light next to, you know, thicker imagery in there. Okay, you don't want to press down like overly hard. That's not going to get us a better impression. All that would do is it would squeeze the ink out from under the stamp, okay? But you want to, you know, typical stamping pressure, but just a lengthier um, impression time, okay? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right there. See that? We're going like this. I can't really see the... Um, Joshua trees in here anymore, but I really like that spindly tree there, so I think I'm going to go for two impressions of it. Okay, now this brilliance ink doesn't adhere to it, so what we're going to do afterwards, after it dries, after I you know give it time to dry, what I'll do is I'll take it outside and I'll spray seal it with a probably a workable fixative. Um, the Krylon, which is an acrylic spray, but it's a really thin one. Sometimes if you spray foil um, types of surfaces, you know, the metallics with uh, certain sprays, it can look a little bit more frosted looking. Um, but I've been experimenting with the workable fixative just because I ran out of uh, my UV resistant clear gloss. And I thought, huh, that Workable fixative, even though it's a matte spray, I, th I don't know, it it didn't seem to affect the glossy surfaces of the um, silver paper that I was working with, so I'm going to keep, you know, experimenting with that a little bit. All right, so that is, those are my impressions on there. It's really, really wet and juicy, so I need to be careful about that. All right, so there we have it like that. So we've made use of our paper like that, especially in light of the fact that it's probably discontinued. So we've made something, a decent card out of it. And let's see here. Let's add in some additional texturing in here. Okay, so blue and white uh, paint pen work. I, I had originally splatter painted a bunch of um, white stars in here before, and I removed those um, when I was doing the um, attempted removal of my stays on ink impressions. Um, but I think on this one, I thought about doing that again. I thought about splatter painting in here, but I thought, eh, if I do that, then I might get some of the stars showing through the... Uh, brilliance ink impressions so i figured okay let's just control it this time controlling it meaning just you know applying these uh, little stars uh, by hand i might add quite a few of them in here but um you know it, it doesn't take too long to do now you can just do this with a white pen if you don't have a like a multicolored uh like either gel or acrylic pen set if you do like these types of things, I'd, I'd highly recommend a, a set of um, acrylic pens, paint pens. This is the 0.7 millimeter, millimeter. 
I also like the thicker ones, the two millimeter pens for other types of um, scenes. And I can really recommend these pens um, very highly because I don't find that they clog. I haven't found, at least the Artistry ones, okay. There was another brand that was um, a little bit more opaque and it seemed like a richer, uh, richer um, pigment to binder ratio. So they were a little bit more opaque, but I was a little bit concerned if they're really thicker styles of acrylic, if it might clog, and indeed it kind of dried. Not on the 0.7s, I find most of the 0.7s seem to be the same manufacturer, because um, they all look the same. They're all using the same kind of construction of the pens. Um, but the 0.2, or the two millimeter ones um, seem different. And I did get a little bit of a, kind of a hardening of uh, the paint with one of the brands, not the ones that, uh, that I'm using all the time though. Okay, so I'm adding in quite a few stars in here. I don't know, maybe that was too much, but that was using the blue, so it doesn't stand out quite as much um, by contrast. So if I add in the white and the blue, the white ones look a little bit, well, they look like a younger star, but they also look probably closer to us. So you can get a little bit of um, spatial dimension in your sky, you know, with some near fars and some star ones by using just simply darker and lighter um, ink or paint, I should say. But these pen sets are pretty cheap, though, too. You know, cost per pen is like, I don't know. It's less than a dollar. Okay, so that is that. I would make a couple of these stars kind of glow like I have in here with a little bit of uh, white pigment ink on a Q-tip and then you just kind of dab on there very, very lightly. But you dab off a lot of the ink first and then you dab on here. But my stars are a little bit wet. Plus that ink that I've straked in here is wet. It's like sopping wet right now. So if I tried to do that little glowing little star right now, I would probably smudge a lot of the existing um, paint and black ink that's down here. So anyways, you have that like that. Now this might be a good instance. I mean, I could stamp out some kind of word stamp up there in white. And I think that might look interesting. But again, I would do that later on after this is dried and probably spray sealed as well um, before I tried a white impression. The white impression is never going to look that super white again um, if I stamp it directly on here. Again, just because that white pigment ink isn't like terribly opaque. All right, but that is it. I'm looking around. I mean, I can kind of see where some of that impression of the Joshua tree was like right back in here. But I don't think that looks too bad. I think this is, we've made use from scrap to scene, <laughs> I call it. When you just take something that, you know, you might kind of think of, you know, tossing out, but then you can make a nice scene out. And this was truly like a piece of scrap with the uh, the existing imagery down there. But like I said, it's a really cool paper like that. And I would hate to toss it out, especially in light of the fact that I don't think we can get any more of it. So might as well make a card out of it. And uh, why not? You know, I think it came out pretty good. Now this down here, I haven't com completely ruled out the idea of like a reverse impression. I, maybe if I spray seal this, I might be able to stamp out, you know, maybe a, another tree or something like this in white. I think that would look pretty cool. I don't know. I, I like this too, though. It's just such a really, I don't know, it's just such a dark card like that. Just kind of my initial response is, or instinct is to put something a little bit lighter down in this area, but um, I don't know, maybe we'll just stay with this one. All right, so anyways, light pillars, blue light pillars, or you can say uh, something like northern lights here. 
And it's pretty fun stuff, you know, with the holographics, all those different colors are just inherently in the paper, kind of relieving us of the need to add color into these pieces. This paper right here too, you do all these trees, just something like this in Boston silver. I think that would be pretty uh, interesting on a type of paper similar to this, you know, darker holographics. All right, so anyways, scrap to scene. Hope you enjoyed this. And uh, remember, you know, just kind of stick with your um, pieces. If you don't like something, <laughs> you know, if you drop a stamp or something like that, you can always just kind of stamp right over it um, with uh, thicker, bolder imagery. And, you know, nine times out of ten, you can come up with a pretty interesting scene and maybe in a compositional arrangement than what you maybe normally would do had you been stamping on just a blank piece of, uh, you know, blank surface as opposed to having to work around something. So sometimes you can come up with some good ideas doing that. Okay, yeah, but uh, a couple little glowing stars in here will be a nice textural um, addition to this. So I'll put the results up on, uh, like, Facebook or something like that and uh, um, Instagram. Uh, my Flickr, I've maxed out my uh, account on that, so I can't upload to that, but you'll see the finished uh, um, card up there. So anyways, I can't wait to format and see what it looks like. Thanks uh, for watching.